Today we've got a great story of revenge against an angry customer who's riding around in one of those mobile shopping carts. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, divorce revenge. Backstory, I dated a girl from 2008 to 2016 when we got married in May. Things were amazing, almost never fought, had the same goals, interests, everything. She'd always been a bit of a truth stretcher, but nothing too serious, usually just to make herself look better to others. Her best friend would comment on it to me, but we both blew it off because it wasn't ever ill-intentioned. She also had to be the center of attention, literally refused to play Mario Party if she wasn't Mario, and would throw a fit. Absolute minor things, really. Well, in the span of a year, her mom died. She got off antidepressants, used for allergies, but she didn't know they were antidepressants. We got engaged, she moved two hours away for work for three months, and we started wedding planning. Then she gets a new job for a guy that only hired young women, 17 to 23, who was just divorced by his wife for cheating. Well, marriage is tough, choices have to be made financially, and she was told no for the first time in her life. And he promised her the world, and within three months of getting married, she had already cheated. I tried to save it, shouldn't have even tried, but it was over. The revenge, all of her stuff was in my house. Clothes, furniture, everything. She left with the clothes on her back and a handful of other things. Lied about moving in with him, lied about going out of the country, lied about not having him over to our house. I got everything that wasn't explicitly hers. She had to provide a list, I had to approve, and she would let me know the exact day and time to pick up her stuff. And she was only allowed to bring her dad to help. So I threw all of her stuff in my sunroom, safe from the weather. You can get it two ways, through the side yard to a back door, or through the middle of the house. It was during the time of year it usually rains in the evening, tonight was no exception. When she arrived with her dad, all of her stuff was laid out in piles in the sunroom, but I made sure all of her sex toys and outfits were on top. Petty revenge, yes, but that's not all. Remember, there's two ways to get to the room. It's raining outside, so going through the yard sucks, but coming through the house had a catch too. That same night, I decided to throw a little party. I invited all the people that told her she was an idiot for doing what she did. Some of the guests included her now former best friend and maid of honor, two other bridesmaids, four other close friends, and a police officer to make sure it all went smoothly. We had a very lovely dinner watching the show. She did complain to her lawyer but was told tough crap. Now, faced with walking your stuff through the rain or walking through all your close friends, which would you choose? She chose the rain. I can't begin to explain to you how perfectly devilish this is. As somebody that hates being the center of attention, like imagining walking in there through the party, having this awkward moment where you've got to pick up all your stuff, just so good. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, I forced my bad neighbors into an unwanted move. I got my very first apartment at the ripe age of 26. I was fortunate enough to be able to afford one without roommates. I was a model tenant, paid my rent on time every month, polite to the office workers, never caused trouble. I lived on the top floor of a three-story building. Well, two years after I moved in, I had new neighbors move into the apartment below me. I was working a swing shift so my hours were 3pm to 11pm and I often stayed up late till 3am to do minor chores. Dishes, cooking, cleaning, but not vacuuming. I also had two cats at the time. My new neighbors immediately went on the war path against me. I could not make any noise without them banging on my floor. I unloaded my dishwasher at 11am on a Sunday and they flipped out. They complained to the office about my herd of animals. They sent police to my door at 9pm because I was watching TV at a reasonable volume with the subtitles on. I literally could not make any sound without them complaining. It culminated in one of them pounding on my door for 10 minutes after I dared call the office to express my frustration. So I called the office back, told them that I didn't feel safe in my apartment due to my neighbor's actions, legal grounds for me to break my lease. But then I dropped my bombshell. The neighbors had four people in a one-bedroom apartment that had a two-person max capacity. Apartment management told my neighbors they had to move into a more expensive two-bedroom apartment or their lease would be terminated. They moved to the larger apartment on the other side of the complex. My new neighbors were great. 
two adult men who smoked weed on the balcony. Never even spoke to them. Loved them. Does anybody else agree that the best neighbors are the ones that just kind of keep to themselves? Like, you don't have to worry about them, they don't bother you, you don't bother them. I mean, I suppose it's nice to have just a good rapport with your neighbors regardless, but if they're just never a bother, that's nice, right? This next story is, neighbors lose free parking spot due to bullying. This isn't my neighbor, but my aunt's. She's been having issues with them for years now. They're the type of neighbor to take pictures of your yard and send it to the city to complain. They did this three times. The wife even approached my aunt and told her how she complained to the city. This specific neighbor doesn't have a parking space. However, my aunt does, but she doesn't drive. For years, she's allowed them to use her street parking space without complaint, even with them reporting and bullying her. About four years ago, they asked my aunt's permission to do some building work on my aunt's porch so that they could make a parking space. They would take half of my aunt's porch. She said no. They got mad and told her they'd do it anyway. My aunt complained to the city, and the city said if they start building work, to call the police. For weeks, it was radio silent, and once again my aunt was approached by the husband, asking her once again if they could take half of her porch, and once again she said no. He got mad and asked why and started bashing my aunt, telling her she doesn't even own the home and doesn't need permission. My aunt used to share a small back fence with these people, but they built a taller fence on their side and then knocked the old fence into my aunt's backyard. She saw the husband with a metal pipe doing this. I got so mad and asked my aunt why she didn't call the cops. That's criminal damage. But my aunt doesn't want any problems with these people. They also on occasion have house parties from 9pm till the early hours playing loud music and my aunt has never called the cops on them. Yet when my aunt had a small barbecue party at 12pm on a Saturday they called the cops on her. They must have made some nonsense up as the cops did show up and were as confused as we were. On a visit to my aunt's house I parked my car in her parking spot and within 20 minutes the husband comes banging on the door. I open it and he starts screaming at me to move my car. I say no and before I can shut the door in his face, he puts his foot in the door preventing me from closing it at that point. I was mad and told him he better move his foot before I call the cops as he's scaring me. He backs off and tells me I better move my car or he'll be the one calling the cops. My aunt recently passed her driving theory test and once she passes her practical test, she can drive. So I decided to buy her a car just to freak with the neighbors, now they have no parking space. Yes, they were really mad, but what can they do? It's her space and she doesn't even drive yet, so it just sits there collecting dust. If they were nice, decent people, my aunt might have just let them have part of her porch, but from day one, they acted like pieces of crap. I mean, I'm sorry, but even if these people were the nicest neighbors, them coming by and saying, hey, can I have half of your porch? Uh, no. How do you just ask somebody for half of the porch of their house? This next story is, I sewed my ex's clothes together after we broke up. This is pretty recent. To make things short, I broke off my engagement and asked for our relationship to improve before marriage. He said no. I said okay. Then he came home and told me that everything was going to be fine and he loved me, etc. And then called me on the phone two hours later to say, I only proposed because I felt pity for you. And I won't go to therapy because the only problem I have in my life is you. I blocked him everywhere. He still has his things in my house. So I took all his clothes and sewed socks together, sewed pants legs with the butt part of the pants, sewed the holes for the heads and arms in his t-shirts. I put everything in a case and wrote a note that said, I hope this isn't pitiful to you. Have fun. Just to be clear, I didn't break his clothes or anything. I even put a tool to rip the stitches in the case and didn't touch clothes which fabric could be ripped if sewed. I'm feeling kind of guilty already, but I just discovered like 10 minutes ago an eyeliner that was not mine in his backpack. He's coming for his stuff tomorrow and I won't be here. A friend will handle everything. I just hope that when the friend handles these things, there's nothing that is like in contact that he can handle. As far as like going on a rampage and trying to like break stuff OP owns. Sadly, I do think this is kind of overly petty. I can't really blame OP because I feel like I would be just as ruined being treated the way OP got treated. But I think this is definitely the kind of thing that after the fact you kind of regret doing. Our next story is the rude lady at the grocery store. Yesterday I was walking up to my local grocery store and a lady power walks herself to the door. 
She acted like she didn't see me, which was impossible. She almost ran me over. Then she calls out to her daughter to hurry up. I stopped and let the daughter go in front of me. The deli area makes all sorts of yummy sandwiches to order. You just have to fill out a little card with your order and they'll make it for you immediately or while you finish grocery shopping. So I walk over to the deli and see a couple standing there. The deli lady's making their food. No worries. I'm not in a hurry. I walk over to the little counter and fill out my card and hand it to another lady who propped over to help. Now the same chick who tried to run me over at the entrance is standing in front of the deli windows looking at the meats and cheeses. She tells the ladies that she was there before me and she didn't know about filling out the cards. This, of course, is 100% not the truth. So I step up and say, no ma'am, I was here first. One lady starts making my sandwich and the chick reiterates that she was there first and should be served before first. By the way, she still hasn't finished filling out her order card. Her daughter is staring straight at me. So I look in her eyes, staring back. I hold her gaze for several uncomfortable moments and then I say hello. She stops staring and turns to her mother. Then mom starts talking about how famished she is, so the deli ladies give her a piece of bread. Just because I could, since I had time, I added a few items to my sandwich. A little mayo, extra red onions. At this point the deli lady is laughing at me because she knows what I'm doing. At the end, I asked if it could be toasted on the panini press. The deli lady starts laughing out loud. I just smiled and looked at the mom and daughter. She was so angry, but there was really nothing she could do. I grabbed a blueberry muffin from the bakery and headed to check out. I can't lie, I was really hoping the mom and daughter would be in line. Alas, they were still at the deli counter waiting on sandwiches. I actually giggled to myself. I don't know why, but I had all kinds of time yesterday to be petty. I just know I would be so internally livid if I were at any place putting an order in and not only is somebody trying to jump the line but is like basically pressuring you to try to hurry up. Makes you want to turn around and say some real choice words to them, at least you're saying it internally. Our next story is, I'm a Barbie girl. For some reason, my 15 year old female, older brother 17 year old male, has started blasting music whenever he uses the bathroom. Nothing's wrong with listening to music, but it's the fact that he deliberately blasts it on max volume and repeats certain phases of songs for up to 30 minutes. My parents have asked him to stop. My older brother is asked to stop. Heck, even I asked him to stop. But the songs get more annoying every day and he just keeps going. And the worst part? He just told us all to deal with it and it's not that big of a deal. Cue the petty revenge. Every day of this week, I sat inside my bedroom blasting I'm a Barbie girl on repeat and holding it right up to my wall. Our rooms are next to each other and the walls are thin. Yesterday, my brother came up to me and yelled that he needed to study and that my music was a distraction. With a smirk on my face, I told him to deal with it and it's not that big of a deal. I'm writing this story because I saw my brother making his way to the bathroom earlier with earbuds this time. Revenge is a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life is plastic. My only guess would be like, I don't know if they're doing something that's noticeably loud, but they wouldn't want anybody to hear them. But I'm not gonna lie, if you're having one of those bad Taco Bell days, usually you just like, if you have a fan in the bathroom, turn that on, turn the faucet on, turn the shower on. It's a weird choice to just be like blasting only certain sections of songs on loop. Maybe they just like the acoustics. Our next story is, she thought she got revenge, but it was mine. I work for a small municipal department in a rural area. We have 10 employees and some volunteers. I'm in charge of daily operations and I answer to someone else. One of my team decided that she didn't like me anymore when I was promoted to this position a couple of years ago and had generally been a pain in the butt with everyone. She complains about everyone endlessly, about how nobody ever does anything except her. When I work with her, I'm in my office from 8am until 9 or 10pm working while she sits on the couch and watches TV most of the day. Most days, she'll clean for an hour. Occasionally, she gets in a mood and cleans for several hours. She worked with a volunteer the day before, but had already left work by the time I got there at 6.45 for my 7 o'clock start time. So we have a rather loose uniform standard in my department for the volunteers. Basically, they need to wear a t-shirt identifying them as part of our department. 
when they're responding to an emergency, that requirement is extremely lax. These are all kept in a closet in the station and issued to new volunteers. Full-time personnel have a $500 a year clothing allowance. I replenish these t-shirts far too often for the amount of people being onboarded. I don't think anybody is stealing them. I think it's more along the lines of, I'm here to respond but I don't have a t-shirt with me, so they grab a new shirt. So we're approaching the end of our fiscal year and I still have money in my uniform budget. I place a large order of shirts and get these folded nicely and organized and then placed into the same closet, but this time the door gets locked, so 100 shirts doesn't wander off in a couple months. I left a note on the door that I'd locked it and to contact me if access is needed. This went on a couple of weeks, and my pain in the butt employee was extremely vocal that she believed it was stupid that the door was locked. There were a few other things stored in there, but mostly just junk that needed disposed of properly and couldn't go in the trash. Old laptops, computer monitors, etc. The way our schedule works, I was out of the office for a week. I got off work at 7am on Friday, and I wasn't due back in the office until 7am the following Friday. I worked one day covering at our north station, and then the Friday I returned is my weekend to work. On the Monday where I was out of the office, I received a phone call from my pain in the butt employee stating that she needed to get into that closet. I didn't ask for a reason why because I didn't think it was necessary, so I told her that the key was in the safe, which all FT employees have access to. I really thought nothing of it. So Friday rolls around, I have a meeting with a county administrator at 7 o'clock. I get to work at 6.45 and open the door to find a large pile of things that had all been in storage with a note. We need to get rid of this stuff. Okay, it's springtime, we're probably due for some spring cleaning. But if you're going to clean, have a plan to get rid of the crap that you're pulling out of storage. Don't just pull it out and hang a note on it for someone else to deal with. Some of it was from that closet, some of it wasn't even ours to get rid of, and some of it was stuff we are absolutely not getting rid of and still needed. I found the original blueprints to our station buried in this pile of stuff to get rid of. So the county administrator walks in. He's instantly pissed because the pain in the butt employee spent all day the previous day whining about how I hadn't been there and nobody's doing anything and she had to clean this whole station by herself. Same old, same old. Her big pet peeve is garbage cans. If there is a single piece of garbage in a garbage can when I leave, she will call the administrator and complain. When she leaves, if she collects the garbage, it's all stuffed into one can and not taken out but I'm more the type to just take it out and move on with my day. Take the high road because the low road will get flooded eventually. So instead of having our meeting, we start digging into this pile of stuff because we aren't going to be able to do anything to get rid of it on a Friday. The dump isn't even open and there's no place around us that recycles electronics. I got to put some of this stuff back in the closet. I go to the safe. The key is missing. Weird. Whatever, there's a spare in my locker. I go get it and try to stick it in the door, and the doorknob has been changed to one that doesn't lock, or even accept a key. I'm stunned. She was so annoyed by that one closet that she changed the entire doorknob. The levee just breached. The low road is under a flash flood warning. County administrator calls her immediately, tells her to turn around and come back to work and change the doorknob back. She tells him, no, I have an appointment, and even if I didn't, I don't want that door locked, and I quit. The best part is we're paying for some education on her behalf, and she's going to owe us about $18,000 now. Honestly, I don't know what this lady's problem is, but like, I'd almost wonder if there's like a legitimate issue here that needs some kind of like intervention from a professional, because I just don't understand why they would act so irrationally. Our next story is, got hometown bully, sister, and their boyfriends kicked out of the strip club I worked at, and banned from all clubs around town. I was working as a bartender at a strip club about 8 years ago, the only one in my region. Busy night as always, made a few backdrafts, poured some shots, all was going well. Then I look up and see some girls laughing and pointing. I recognized one instantly as a bully from my hometown. They were in my place of work making me anxious and uncomfortable, so I told the bouncers to remove them. He did, no questions asked. 
The one girl refused to leave and then her sister made a scene, tried to fight me in front of the bar, and the lot of them got kicked out and their boyfriends too, who were busy watching the strippers in the dance room and missed the whole thing. Then they all got banned from the rest of the clubs around town for two years for being entitled losers. Should have just left me the heck alone, Jesse. Well, I sure hope everybody involved enjoyed driving an hour out of their way to have a fun night out, if that's what they consider a fun night out. Our next story is, never stand me up on my birthday. Several years ago, I matched with this guy on a dating app, let's call him Zach. We had texted each other for a few days and had plans to hang out that next weekend. It seemed to be going well. Then he found out it was my birthday the next day, Thursday. I had plans already with family to go out to dinner, but he said he'd take me out for ice cream afterwards. He even texted me Thursday afternoon to confirm we were still good for that night. At dinner, I declined getting any birthday dessert with my fam, as I had ice cream to look forward to. We said our goodbyes and I went home to wait for Zach to pick me up. Well, he was 15 minutes late, and I texted asking if he was still on his way. He replied that he was running late, just leaving work. Okay, no problem. 30 more minutes went by. I texted asking if he was alright. The message couldn't be delivered. What the freak? I thought maybe his phone died. Waited a bit longer, then decided to check if he'd blocked me for whatever reason. Well, he had. We were unmatched on the dating app and he unfriended me on Facebook. He had friended me the day before. I was so freaking mad. This dude stood me up on my birthday and wasted my night when I could have made other plans with friends. And he had the audacity to text me he was running late when he knew darn well he wasn't coming. His mistake was not blocking me on social media. I found his married brother, hoping married meant somewhat responsible, on Facebook and messaged him. I feigned concern saying Zach was going to take me on a birthday date but said he was running late. And then his messages stopped delivering and I was worried he'd gotten in an accident. The brother was concerned, saying it was super weird and he'd try to make sure he was okay. The next morning, Zach messaged me on Facebook giving a half-hearted apology because my brother said I needed to. I assume he got chewed out, which is just so satisfying. I asked why he stood me up and he just said I was too pure for him and he didn't want to pull me down with him. Whatever the freak that means. Whatever the reason, he didn't get away with it and was forced to apologize. And that made my petty side so happy. I definitely think that if you stand somebody up on their birthday, you deserve to be publicly called out and shamed for such a thing. Like, at least have the courage to just straight up say, Hey, I'm not going to make it. Sorry. I'm sorry for wasting your time. And then you can say your weird thing about being too pure and that you didn't want to pull them down with you. Our next story is, pissed at me for missing a club meeting, then misses club meeting. So I do this club called Youth in Government. We make bills and debate them. It's actually really fun. And I was partnered with Bella, the most pretentious person ever. Like that stick is so far up her butt you can see it when she opens her mouth. Anyways, we write our bill and all is well and, oh no, I need to miss a meeting because I'm literally going to be in a different city for TSA state comps. Mind you, I give her plenty of notice, at least a week. She's cool with it again, all is well. The next week rolls around and I get sick at school, so I have to go home and I email her that I won't be there because I'm quite literally so sick. And then I get the most condescending email ever about how I missed too many meetings and didn't do any work, only looked over stuff. Like, no, I wrote our entire intro, submission, and did all the research. Now we're to my petty moment. We had a meeting today, and I realized she was not present. And I did what any sensible person would, and copy and pasted the email she sent me and sent it to her. And rather than being pretentious and saying regards at the end, I said in the most condescending way, adios amiga. Now is this a youth in government club or is this a drama club? There's sometimes where I daydream about what it would be like if I could go and relive a day from when I was younger, you know, thinking about going back to maybe what you would consider easier times. And then I hear stories like this, and sometimes I don't miss the weird drama that can happen around that age. Our next story is, two can play at this game, featuring concert bullies. So I'm 27, non-binary but very femme presenting and have been going to concerts, usually alone, since I was 15, and a lot of them. 
So as you can imagine, I've had to toughen up and stand up for myself because sadly sometimes shows bring out the worst in people, both creepy men and unfortunately mean girl bully types are two things I've grown very used to but also super tired of. A couple weeks ago, I was at a show, with a friend this time, and before the show, we started talking to the group of girls in front of us who were super fans of this band, and had all taken time off and traveled to be at this show. All very kind and welcoming people that were lovely to talk to. One of them excuses herself to the bathroom and asks my friend and I to save her spot, so we kind of fill in to hold it for her. Out of nowhere, these two younger girls at least 21 or had good fakes because they were very drunk, come pushing from the back, shove my friend and I out of the way, and start giggling to themselves about how they made it to the front. I, as politely as I could at first, said, hey, sorry, we're saving the spot for someone who went to the bathroom. She was waiting outside for hours, to which one of them replies in the most condescending and fake tone, No, honey, look, what's gonna happen is my friend and I are gonna stay up here, and it's all good energy and good vibes, okay? Smile. At this point, I am fuming and trying not to ruin this girl's self-esteem with words, but I take a deep breath, smile at her and say, Okay, in the same sarcastic way. She turns back to her friend to laugh about me, The other girl comes back and they get pushed back a bit, but not too much. They were being so loud during quiet songs in the show and also yelling at the lead singer and calling him daddy. Everyone in the vicinity was glaring at them as well. Mid-show, the same girl had the audacity to turn to me and say, Since you were so supportive of her bathroom break earlier, can you hold our spot while we go, babe? And I actually kind of laughed out loud and said, Sure, I guess. They leave and this sweet little 15 year old girl who was there with her mom had excitedly told me earlier that it was her first concert shyly asked if that spot was taken because she was having a hard time seeing due to her height. I said not at all and nudged her forward. The mean girls came back, rolled their eyes at me and then shuffled to a worse spot off to the side. I felt like I was caring for my inner child who was always nervous to interact with older people at shows. And it also reinforced to me that there can be so many ways to get petty revenge that can sometimes also benefit others without hurting someone with words. Creativity is key. I just appreciate that these mean girls had their limits, you know? Like after coming back and finding out this 15 year old girl is in that spot, they're not going to try to go up there and just bully them out of that spot. At least they accepted it and moved on. Our next story is beep beep beep. I work at a Lowe's and posted a couple of days ago about a petty revenge that was done by someone else. This time, I am the revenger. A side note, the assistant manager and I went to high school together and would occasionally hang out together. It was about 5 minutes before closing time and I was seated at a desk in the very back of the store helping a customer order a washing machine. An old guy, a total jerk, riding in the electric scooter provided at the store entrance, drove up to the desk and yelled out, Hey, I need some help. I told him I was with a customer and would help him as soon as I was done. I can't wait, the store's gonna close. Again, I politely said I'd be with him as soon as possible. He then drove his scooter right up behind the chair I was sitting in and put it in reverse. This began a loud beep, beep, beep noise. The customer and I could not talk because of the volume. I turned around and asked him to please turn it off, but he yelled, When you help me, I will my petty revenge. I stood up, told the customer to follow me to the service desk at the front of the store, walked behind the scooter, the jerk didn't turn around, and hit the emergency shutoff switch underneath the back of the scooter with my toe. The beeping stopped immediately, and as we were walking away, the jerk realized he couldn't drive anywhere. He started yelling, but the now grinning customer and I walked to the front and finished the order. All the outside doors were now locked, since it was after closing, and I had the manager on duty let the customer out. I told him what had happened, and that jerk was stuck in the back of the store. I clocked out and left, but I was told two days later that the manager finished all his closing activities, including dimming the lights before he walked back, because I'd informed him there was a customer still in the store. By telling him, I was following store procedures and could not be blamed for anything. After examining the scooter, he told the jerk that the battery had died and he would have to go up front and get another scooter. 
The jerk made some noises that I'd sabotaged the scooter because of the beeping, but the manager apologized to him, suggesting that using the backup warning excessively could run down the battery very quickly, and the scooter probably didn't have a full charge when he started using it, since it was the end of the day. Manager's petty revenge? Even after all that, the jerk demanded to make his purchase, but was told that the registers had all been reconciled and closed until the next morning. Let this be a fantastic lesson in patience. Sad thing is, it's not likely that this guy actually learned from this and is going to be more patient next time, is he? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another crazy revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.